Speaker, I get it that people are desperate to have their health service fixed. But I will not join in the pretense that an executive here, which can only exist by the grace and favour of a party that doesn't want Northern Ireland to exist, will bring them the stability that they create. I also remind the public that the present health crisis was made in Stormont. It was the executive which broke with pay parity for nurses. It was the executive that, through successive ministers, radically reduced the number of beds in our hospitals. And of course, we're only here today because of a double blackmail. Blackmail of a Secretary of State who says, I have the money to fix the health service, but I won't give it unless there's an executive. A Secretary of State who shamelessly put the life of an executive above the life of the sick. And, of course, the blackmail of Sinn Féin, that you can only have a government if you pay the ransom that they demanded. Indeed, it's a commentary in itself on the perversity of these governmental arrangements, that though it was Sinn Féin that tore down the institutions for what they were worth, it was the DUP that had to pay the price to get them back. And what a price it was to eat a mountain of their own words, laced with yogurt and curry, a special brand of Campbell's soup. What a digestive system the DUP has. I remember 2017, the call of the First Minister was, not in my watch in respect of Irish language legislation. And yet here today, she is the handmaiden of that very legislation. Here today, she is the sponsor of an Irish language enforcer who will put Irish upon every public authority, including this House, where we will have the ludicrous spectacle of needless interpretation. And on every council chamber, we will put our ratepayers to the needless cost of translation. Now, there may well be a honeymoon period for this executive, at least until the Irish language legislation is safely on the statute book, at least until the innocent victims have been betrayed, been betrayed by the passing of the unbalanced Stormont House Agreement uh, on the legacy proposals. But at the end of it, this is only a staging post for Sinn Féin. The First Minister knows that. She knows that from her infamous reptilian turn of phrase when she knew what she would be doing if she gave in to the Irish language demand. But power, any power, is the supreme draw. And even now, we're not even going you to have the member to wind up his remarks. I'll do my best to give you as much opposition as I can. OK, now, the honeymoon might not last that long, so thank you very much for your remarks, Mr Alistair. So, I will now call on Jerry Carroll. Speaker, um, and I believe it is plainly obvious that this Assembly will have some major uh, issues.